Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. So glad to have you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to do our prayer scope on today. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for inviting your followers, inviting your friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to do prayers that deal with obey. Um, thank you so much for joining, inviting your followers and your friends. So glad to have you all on today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As we get ready to transition into a new year, we're going to transition with prayer. So hello, Kim. Thank you all so much for joining again. Today we're going to do prayers that deal with obey and obedience. So I thank you all so much for joining and already releasing the hearts and inviting your followers. We're just going to give it a few moments. In the background, we have Psalmist Rain playing, and we'll have this playing as we begin to pray about obey. Welcome from Tobago. So, ha, it's ridiculous. Um, let's get started. I want to just share some information with you before I actually start praying or we start praying right now. I wanted to share with you um, the definition of obey. Um, I find that many times we use words. We use words and it's not that we don't know the meaning of the words, but sometimes by looking at the definition, it gives us a greater understanding, especially when we get ready to go into prayer. So I looked up the word obey in the Greek and in the Hebrew. And some definitions of the word obey are as follows. It means to hear, perceive by ear. Um, it means to hear or have the power to hear. Hello, Helen. It means to hear with attention or interest. Now, now think of these definitions as we get ready to pray um, through scriptures that deal with obey. Um, and again, it means to hear with attention or interest. It means to listen to. It also means to understand. Um, it means to give heed. This is a great one. It means to consent and to agree. Hi, Shauna Kay. Um, it also means to grant a request. Um, it means to be regarded. Oh, this word I thought was excellent. Obey means to summon. Think about that for a minute. It means to summon. Um, it also means to tell. It means to proclaim, um, make a proclamation. Summon was mentioned twice. Uh, calls to be heard. Now, in the Greek, it also means to listen attentively by implication, to heed or conform to a command or authority. Let me say that definition again. Obey means to heed or conform to a command or authority. So those are just some definitions of the word obey. Ha. So um, we are going to begin when I when I pray through the scriptures, I like to um, provide you all with the scriptures so you can use them as a later time as a launching board for for prayers that you may pray this week or in the days to come. Um, I also sometimes look at the scripture in different versions and sometimes that helps me to be able to pray the scripture out even the more. So let's get started. Father God, we just thank you even now for this time to come before your presence. We thank you that in this month of December, oh God, that you are using this time to release downloads, but you are also dealing with us, oh God. And we thank you that one thing that you deal with every believer at some point and sometimes more um, in particular seasons has to do with our obedience. And Father God, we thank you that you are causing us to go up high 
higher in our obedience to you. We thank you that you are causing us to go up higher in our obedience to your word. We thank you that you are causing, that you are beckoning us, that you are summoning us to come to a greater place of obedience, you, O oh God. We thank you that you are shifting our attention and that you are shifting our focus off of the things of this world so we can obey you in a, in a better way and in a quicker way. Mm-hmm. And Father God, we thank you that you are even causing us to obey you in every area of our lives and not just be so focused on if it's a big thing or if it's a small thing because obedience is obedience to you, oh God. So cause us to be even the more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Father God, we even repent for when we've been disobedient. We repent for when we have grieved the Holy Spirit. We repent for when we have ignored your instructions. We repent for when we have ignored your commands. We repent for when we have ignored your proclamations. We repent for when we did not yield to you and we did not listen to you. We repent for when we consented and agreed with the enemy and that did not agree with the word of God and the will of God. Father God, we repent for giving heed to the idols of the land and to the voices of this society and this world. We repent, oh God, we ask you to forgive us. Father God, we decree and declare that this will be a time and this will be a season that our ears will be open to hear you. We stand at attention. Father God, we will not be bored, but we will have an interest to listen to that which you are speaking. Father God, we will have an ear to hear. We will have an ear to perceive. Father God, we thank you that you even reward obedience. And we thank you for your word, which says in Genesis 27 and 8, Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. I decree and declare, Father, that we will be those that will obey your voice. We will be those that will heed to your voice. We will be those that will listen to your voice. We will be those that will hear your voice, O God, and we will hear and we will do that which you command us to do. Father God, we thank you that in Exodus 19 and 5, it says, Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my my commandment, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Father God, we thank you that as we make a decision every day to obey you, as we make a decision every day to heed to your voice, as we make a conscious decision to obey your God and not just obey you, we decree that we will be those who will keep your covenant. We decree that we will be those who will keep your commandments. We decree that we will be those who will keep your word. And we thank you that your word says that as we heed to your voice and as we keep your commandment, then we shall become a peculiar treasure unto you above all people. Father God, we thank you that you are making us unique. We thank you that you are making us different. Father God, we thank you that you are sculpting something so particular on the inside of us that it will cause other people to wonder. It will cause other people to search us out. It will cause other people to seek us out. They will call, it will cause us to stand out, not for our own glory, but for your glory. We thank you that Deuteronomy 13 and four says, you shall walk after the Lord, your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Father God, I thank you that we will be those who will walk after you. We will be those who will seek after you. We will be those who will search after you, oh God. And not only we will seek, we will walk and we will search. But Father God, we will be those who will fear you, who will reverentially fear you, oh God. We will be those who will submit to you. We will be those who will yield to you, oh God. And we will keep your commandments. We will keep your way. We will keep your desires, oh God. We will keep your will and that we will, oh obey your voice and we will serve you. We will cleave to you. We will, we will hold close to you. Oh God. And another God, we will not serve. We thank you for acts five and 29. When Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Father God, we thank you that this is a season that you are causing our ears to be so sharp to that which you speak and that we will not be influenced by the opinions and the approval of men. Father God, we thank you that in this hour we will have strict obedience and we understand that we ought to obey God. We ought to surrender to God. 
We ought to yield to God rather than men. Father God, we thank you that we are to honor men. We thank you that we are to respect men, but we are not to worship men. Father God, we thank you that when we obey you, Father God, that you will cause your, your, your glory to rest upon us. You will cause your blessings to rest upon us because of our act of obedience. And Father God, we repent for every time that we allow another person's opinion. We allow another person's approval. We allow another person's acceptance to override us obeying you. But we decree and declare as we prepare to posture ourselves to move into 2017 that we will be those who will obey God rather than men. We thank you for Romans 6 and 16 that says, Know ye not that whom ye yield your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey, whether sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. In the Amplified Classic Version, it says, Do you not know that if you continually surrender yourselves to anyone to do his will, you are the slaves of him whom you obey, whether that be to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness, which is right doing and right standing with God. Father God, we thank you that we will be those who will surrender ourselves to you. We will be those who will be obedient, which will lead us to righteousness. Father God, we thank you that our, our obedience calls us to be those who are doing right, and it causes us to be those who are in right standing with you. We ask you that you forgive us, but when we allowed ourselves to be enslaved to sin. Forgive us for when we allowed ourselves to be enslaved to bondage. Forgive us for when we allowed ourselves to be enslaved to temptation. Father God, this day we repent. We make a turnaround. We go in the other direction and we declare that we will be those that our obedience will lead us to righteousness. We thank you for your word in Hebrews 13 and 7, which says obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls as they must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable to you. In the Amplified Classic Version, it says obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually recognizing their authority over you for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual warfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part. Let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you. Father God, we pray first, forgive us for when we were not submitted to the right spiritual leader. Forgive us for when we did not, um, we did not, we did not allow them to lead us as you have called them to lead us. And we decree that in this season and in this hour of our lives that we will be those who will obey our spiritual leaders. We will be those who will submit to them. We will be those who will constantly and continually recognize their authority over us. But Father God, we pray that you even begin to heal those who were submitted to wicked leaders. We pray that you begin to heal them of rejection. We pray that you begin to heal them of the abuse. We pray that you begin to heal them of the offense. We pray that you begin to heal them of the deep hurt. We pray that you begin to heal them of even the abandonment. And Father God, for those who are in ministries and those who are connected to people who are what you call wicked shepherds. Father God, we pray for the love of the Father to be released to them to give them the wisdom and the power and the ability to shift into a place of safety that they may find in their place, in their area, and where they live, pastors after your own heart. For you said that you would give us pastors, leaders, spiritual authorities who have your heart. So Father God, we pray that you would disconnect, that you would 
dissolve any demonic soul tie that will cause us to be bound to people who do not have our best interest in mind, that will cause us to be stuck in systems that can't help us grow. Father God, we thank you that when we get to the place and the places where we are able to yield and serve and obey, that we will happily submit ourselves to these spiritual leaders. We thank you for 1 Peter 1 and 22, which says, Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Father, I pray this prayer to hit the body of Christ, that we will be those whose souls are purified through obedience and obeying the truth through the spirit. Father God, let a spirit of obedience hit the body of Christ. Cause us to have our obedience and our allegiance be to God first and not that of man. Father God, I pray for your purifying waters, your purifying fire to be released to the body as a whole and to us as individuals. Let the love of God Be loose to the body of Christ. Father God, we pray that every spirit of contention, every spirit of comparison, every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of judgment, every spirit that is not like you, every spirit of strife. Father God, we we pray for the acts to be laid to the root of every spirit that will cause your body not to be unified and cause us not to be able to walk in love. But I pray that as in 1 Peter 1 and 22, it says that we will be those who will love one another with a pure heart fervently. Father God, I pray that you even begin to search our hearts.